So in the last video we left off having created our database table. So now what we're going to do is handle creating new users. So we're going to go to our text editor. We're going to create a file called index.php and we're going to create a file called login.php. Now we're going to create a new file called login.php. We're also going to create one called createaccount.php. So now what we need to do is connect to our database and we're going to use a special function in PHP called PDO. PDO stands for PHP Data Objects and what it is is a database abstraction layer that's a much better way to connect to a database. So we're using PDO because the MySQLi functions that are built into PHP aren't designed to be accessed directly. They're really low level which means we should be using some sort of database abstraction to access them and that's what PDO is. So we're going to create our PHP tags and we're going to create a variable called PDO and we're going to set it equal to a new PDO object. Inside of the PDO object, we have to pass it a string. The first thing we have to do is tell PDO the type of database we're gonna use. So we're gonna use a MySQL database. Then we have to have a colon, and then we have to tell PDO where we're hosting the database. In this case, it's in localhost, which is my local computer. So we're gonna say host equals, and you could type in localhost like that, but sometimes it doesn't seem to work. So if you put in 127.0.0.1, that's the IP address localhost resolves to, it seems to work fine. Then we tell it our database name, we said DB name is equal to, and we called our database social network. And then we tell PDO the character set of our database. So we said char set equals, and we're gonna say UTF-8. And UTF-8 is the standard character set that's used on the web. Then we simply pass PDO the username, which in this case is root, and the password, in this case there isn't one. Next we need to do one more thing. We need to set PDO, and we access the set attribute method and we need to do this for PDO's error reporting. So we just need to say PDO ATTR underscore ERR mode and then we just say PDO error mode exception and that should be us connected. So we're going to save that and then we're going to go to our file and we're going to run that script. And we got no errors so that means we should be connected to our database. So what we want to do is create a simple form. The method is just going to be the current page and the way we do that is we can either leave it blank or we can just say create account.php. We need three inputs. We say input type text. We want to call it username. Placeholder is going to be username. And we want to do this for all of the form fields. And then finally, we actually just need to put in our submit button. And now we'll just preview that in the web browser. So now what we need to do is we need to create a function that runs when we submit this form. So we'll say if is set post create account. If the form submitted, then we need to grab the values of the username, the password and the email. And we're going to do it like this. So now we've grabbed the username, the password and the email and we've stored them in variables. So we're going to do something to make our lives easier now. We're going to create a new file, we're going to call it db. And it's going to be stored in our classes folder. This is going to make it a lot easier for us to access our database. So what we're going to do is say class db in php tags. We're going to create a private static function called connect. And we're just going to copy and paste our PDO script from here. And then we return PDO. The static just means we don't need to create an object of the DB class to be able to use it. So here we're going to set public static function query. And this is how we're going to interact with our database. So here we're going to write the code to actually query our database. So what this function does is it takes the query we want to run, takes the parameters for that query, it connects to the database, it prepares the query, it executes the query, and it gets the data from the query and returns it. So we're using built-in prepared statements because the reason we're using this query function is because we can reduce a query down to one line, whereas otherwise we'd be running all of these lines every time we wanted to do a single query. So now that we've done that, we want to go back to this file and we want to include it. 
And now that we've included it, we can use our database. So now what we're gonna do is really simple. We're just going to insert the data into the database. So the way we do that is we say DB query. We pass it our query, which is gonna be insert into users, the values, username, password, and email. Whoops, and we just need to put this in here. Params equals an empty array by default. And then here what we're gonna do is we wanna say array to pass our parameters, and our parameters are gonna be username, password, and email. And we wanna say username, which corresponds to this username. And we use this equal sign greater than to say username is equal to the variable username. Password is equal to the variable password. And then we say email is equal to email. And then just underneath that, we will just say that the query was successful. So we'll say echo success. And we'll run this and see what happens. And we're gonna click create account. And we have an error. That's because of our ID field in the table. So we actually just need to create an empty ID field. We're gonna get an error because when we try to fetch the rows from our query, that doesn't work with every type of query. So we're just going to comment that out temporarily. And we also need to pass our parameters to our execute function. Otherwise we won't be able to insert any data. So if we run this now, we're gonna get an error. So what we need to do to fix that is we need to change all of the words in the values section to not match our columns. Because if we go to our table, you can see they match our columns and that's gonna give us problems. So we're just gonna put in a colon before each word. That means it no longer matches our table columns and we shouldn't have any problems. And we're gonna run this and we're gonna click create account. So it says success, we go to our table and we refresh and you can see there's our data, it's been successfully inserted. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna be doing our validation and inserting users, but that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and I'll see you next time.